This is a sort of general video response to the discussion that's taking place right now, or the coming and going, um, regarding the biblical or theistic or Judeo-Christian Islamic view of the afterlife and people's objections to it. I have to say that one of the most um, important factors that um, sort of got me out of Christianity or revealed religion of that nature uh, had to have been the conception of the afterlife, either heaven or hell. I couldn't find anything really um, nice about heaven. It just seemed to be a terrible, sterile place. Um, this, by the way, was what um, was the, the thoughts that went through my mind as an adolescent when I was going to a Roman Catholic uh, school. Um, I couldn't uh, see any any redeeming characteristics in heaven, and hell uh, struck me as bizarre. One of my religion teachers, actually, we had actually a class called religion. One of my religion teachers pretty much um, pushed me over the edge into skepticism and non-belief by a statement. Um, I asked him, okay, you say that God will forgive me everything, all the sins that I've done. So, if I'll be forgiven for whatever, as long as I ask for it, why is there a hell? To which he replied, yes, you'll be forgiven, but you'll still end up in hell. Now, I don't really know if that's official Catholic policy or not, but um, that's what he said pretty much verbatim. Um, and this got me thinking, why is anyone in hell? How could it be possible that anyone could commit some sort of sin heinous enough to land one in a place of suffering for all eternity um, and put there by a God that is supposedly just, merciful, and compassionate. Uh, this, th this simply could not, couldn't fit into my view of, uh, of Christianity as, I, as I'd always been taught. Um, and so I suppose I kind of just drifted away from Christianity, Catholicism, organized religion in general, although I didn't drift into atheism. Um, and again, I think that the only way that I can actually see these things, heaven and hell, um, having any meaning at all is allegorically. I think I know, or I think I've tasted uh, both states. Um, over two decades ago, I went through what's called a major depression. Um, and if anyone has ever actually gone through such a thing, they will note that, that that kind of a state is the closest thing one can get to pure hell. Unremitting suffering. And not only is it unremitting suffering, but you are, um, you are without the hope of the eventual alleviation of such suffering. Um, Dante's Inferno, abandon all hope, all ye who enter here. Uh, heaven, of course, is another thing that one can um, experience, I suppose, in day-to-day -day life. Um, adolescent puppy love, the first time. You're in this almost state of blessed grace, if, uh, if for, for those who have felt it. Um, other things, you can be ecstatic when... Um, when reading poetry that moves you in a certain way, or singing a song, or listening to a piece of music, or um, any number of other things can do it. Any number of, I suppose, peak experiences, meditations, whatever. I can see how heaven and hell can exist as states, but it, for them to exist, or for them to make any sense at all to me, they have to be uh, independent of time. In other words, they are simple states. It's not a question of eternal anything. It's just a state where you feel wonderful or you feel as worse, as, as bad as one can possibly feel. Um, in that sense, I suppose the religious um, depictions of heaven and hell with their devils and fire and, and halos and, and um, glowing light these can be sort of illustrations of that kind of a state, but they fall far short of um, an accurate depiction 
of any kind of heaven and hell that I can conceptualize. Thank you.